Hi, Scott and Darrow from Banner Engineering. In photoelectric sensing, proximity mode encompasses a lot of different application solutions in it. Whether you're just trying to look for presence or absence of a target, or if you're trying to determine a distance and maybe ignore some background. Daryl, can you walk us through the different options as it refers to uh, proximity mode and some of the different things that we should look out for when we're putting a photo eye into those applications? Sure, Scott. So we're gonna start off with the diffuse mode. Uh, the diffuse mode sensor has the emitter and receiver in one housing. Now this time it doesn't need anything like a reflector or a receiver on the other side. Diffuse spreads light out and the object that it's trying to detect is what sends light back to the element. And again with these sensors we use red LEDs, infrared, and laser. One thing you need to be aware of when you're using a diffuse sensor all of our sensors have a spec range that is based off of a target that sends back 90% of the light that hits it. In the real world, that won't always be the case. So even though a sensor may have a spec range, let's just say of three feet, if it sees a target that is dark, it may only detect that target out to one feet. That is a universal issue with all diffuse sensors, and it's just something to be aware of. Also, there's no cutoff distance with diffuse sensors. So if you need to detect a box on a conveyor but there's a shiny object behind it, it may see the box and the shiny object. But the advantages of, of diffuse is they're very low cost and work great in very simple type applications. Now there is a way to get around this background issue. We have a variation of diffuse. Up until now, every sensor uh, had one emitter and one receiver. What we had done with our fixed field sensors is we have one emitter, two receivers. That second receiver gives us cutoff because we are using it in triangulation. So in this example, you see the light emits from the emitter, hits a target. The closer that target is, the greater the attack angle is, and it hits uh, receiver one. As long as light is hitting receiver one, it keeps the output on. But you notice as that target backs up, the angle changes to eventually it hits receiver two. Any light that hits receiver two turns the output off. So in this case, when we have a fixed range, we know exactly where that range ends. So you can have a shiny bracket behind a target and a fixed field sensor will ignore that. It's a huge advantage. That's just another example of uh, hitting uh, receiver two. We also have adjustable field. So the range in these are no longer fixed, they're adjustable. So you can dial it in to the range that you need and continue to get background suppression, another great advantage. So some of the advantages of, again, using diffuse and fixed field, you only have to power up one side, lowers your in installation costs. It can detect objects out to a set distance. It ignores objects in the background that you don't wanna see. And color also is really not an issue with background and adjustable, uh, adjustable field sensors. In proximity mode, Daryl, would that be, which of those modes would be best for an application where maybe you would have to pick up a registration mark on a product that's going by? So with that one, depending on the application, fixed field might be really, really good because you may have something in the background that you want to ignore when that registration mark is gone, or adjustable field because that gives you the ability to dial it in even more precisely as to where you need the cutoff to be. Okay, and then light operate and dark operate as it relates to proximity mode. If we want to transition the output on when the target is in front of us, which mode would we be looking at? So this mode would be light operate, and the reason is as light leaves this emitter, the target that it's looking for sends light back. So when the sensor sees its light, it turns on its output. So dark operate then would be for no target present, correct? Exactly. All right. Thanks a lot, Daryl.